Great. Welcome, everyone. My name is Teresa Belpolsi, and I am honored to present Destination DC's Tourism, Sports, and Visitor Services Post-Marketing Outlook Meeting Deep Dive. This is the opportunity for you to get a more comprehensive look at what our team's goals and priorities are for the 2023 fiscal year. Today, we will be hearing directly from my dream team. Because of all the new faces on both ends, the DDC side, as well as all of you, the members, we have decided to orchestrate the presentation so you are hearing from each of the team members and their priorities in the respective markets. A few housekeeping notes, this presentation is being recorded. The PowerPoint will be available for download on the extranet and in the follow-up that we send to you all. Should you have any questions throughout the presentation, put them in the chat. We'll be addressing them individually or at the end of the presentation. I would now like to introduce our fearless leader and our president and CEO, Mr. Elliot Ferguson. Thank you, Teresa. Every time I'm introduced as fearless, I always remind people that sometimes I am fearful, but I am very <laughs> hopeful and thankful as we're looking at 2023 and the rebound of our industry um, and um, what Destination DC is focusing on as it pertains to that rebound. Now, you know, marketing outlook meeting for us is an opportunity to, of course, share with you all what we plan to do in 2023, but uh, we've all learned over the last two years that uh, best plans and practices are great until there are disruptors. Um, we are hoping that all the disruptors are positive as it pertains to the industry, the return of travel, the ease of visas coming into the international market, domestic market, student youth travel, and the likes, and of course, sports. So um, for us, yes, we are gonna be doing a lot of talking, but if you're not um, asking questions in the chat, and if you're not on the Zoom um, or listening to this later, then you're not really giving us an opportunity to really understand what your needs are and to serve you better. So the, the easiest thing for me to say is that, and, and true, I've got the best team ever. I've got a great executive team. Teresa has been uh, with us for over 20 years, but even with that longevity, we continue to hit reset and think of ways in which we can be more effective in our market. And even though Teresa and I are not millennials or Gen Xers, we are millennial-esque in our thinking, and we are always um, forward thinking in terms of going after the markets. So thank you all for joining us. Thank you for being um, at the Marketing Outlook meeting. And remember, as the team is presenting, this meeting is for you, not for us just to hear us talk. So with that, thank you all for your membership as well. I'll turn it back over to Teresa. Great. Oh, thanks, Elliot. That was very nice notes. And it's been a great 20 years and keep on moving. Um, I now would like to introduce you to the team that will be presenting today. Um, so I know this is a shady looking Motley Crew, but they are my group and they are awesome. Um, we have three divisions uh, inside the Tourism and Sports and Visitor Services team. Um, the tourism team is led by Letizia Sertori, along with Lindsay Hill, Darren Gaughan, Erica Riddle, Erica Jones, and Jennifer Porter. Our sports teams led by Chris Thompson and our newest member to the team, Nick Price. And then our visitor services team led by Jessica Reyes and soon to be announced our new visitor service specialist shortly. We are happy to announce that our international teams are back up and running at full steam. They are our, our, our eyes and ears and guides in the market as we navigate through this recovery. We have offices in China, India, Australia, New Zealand, and the UK. And along with our partnership with the Capital Region, we have expanded offices in Germany, France, and the UK. Please know our team is your team. We encourage you to reach out to them, ask questions, and provide them with all the latest and greatest on your properties and your venues and your tours. You soon will have the opportunity to meet them live and in person in our January Global Marketplace soon information to come. We will include their contact information in our follow-up as well. So let's get this party started. Jess, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Thank you, Teresa. Hi, everyone. Um, so I have the honor of welcoming our visitors to Washington, DC, and I'm excited to welcome you to the first Marketing Outlook meeting follow-up session this year. I am Jessica Reyes. My pronouns are she, her, and I am the Visitor Services and Tourism Manager, and it's been a great year assisting our DC guests. 
Visitor services is as important as ever as we continue to help answer the many questions visitors have, as well as managing the surprising increase in demand for our publications. For those who may not be aware, Destination DC produces the official visitor's map and guide for the city. Last year, we distributed all of our available publications for the first time in years. And so this tells me that our visitors are in need of information to visit our exciting city. And all of you have been utilizing one of the best member benefits you receive, if I do say so myself. We have been responding to both the consumer and member needs, as well as the new trend servicing for 2023. Our strategy will be very focused on the following priorities. Our fall winter official visitor guide is now available and our 2022 official visitors map will be available for distribution next week, October 13th. Hotel members will automatically receive a box of each. If you are interested in receiving our publications, please contact me at ddcvisitor.services at washington.org. We engage, <clears throat> we engage with our visitors on several different platforms, including phone, email, and an example here, our chatbot. The chatbot can be accessed through our website, washington.org, and connects people with and connects people with someone on my team in real time for any questions they may have. The chatbot is a great tool if you need a quick response but can't hop on the phone. We're here to support you. And lastly, one of the most imp important priorities is a new program we will be launching just for you, our members. I see your publications benefit and raise you a member onboarding program. We all know this has been an incredibly challenging year with so many staff shortages and quality recruitment. We have been hearing from you that many of our new staff are not familiar with DC or even with the industry. We would like to help bridge this gap and create a tool that will help your new employees regardless of their position. We are looking on a short 15, 20 minute new employee onboarding program that you can use as part of your HR hiring training. This video will provide a quick orientation of DC, top things that every employee should know about the city and quick reference tools to use for the frontline employee. We will be working with a select group of our members as we build out these assets with the target program rollout in quarter one of 2023. This program will be complemented by quarterly live training webinars, webinars on specific seasonal happenings in DC, including the National Cherry Blossom Festival and DC Jazz Fest. Everyone knows Washington, but our, deserve, our visitors deserve to experience DC. Now tossing it over to Chris Thompson, Sports Sales Manager for updates on the District of Champions. Awesome, thank you, Jess. Good morning, everyone. As Jess mentioned, my name is Chris Thompson. I'm the Sports Sales Manager here at Destination DC. So along with myself and Nick Price, our new sports coordinator, we will be your main contacts for everything sports here in Washington, DC. Um, so beginning with this first slide, we wanna just cover what our priorities have been over the past year and moving forward. So um, over the past year, we've had the privilege to work closely with the sports and entertainment division um, of Events DC as they've been aggressively working behind the scenes to secure top tiered sports and live entertainments um, events. We are working closely in lockstep with Events DC as well as other venues, including our professional and collegiate teams um, within the district to identify new domestic and international premier opportunities. Um, in addition to telling the sports capital story and having a clear understanding of what that means to the city, it is important that we are aligned closely with both ourselves and Events DC, Events DC um, research team to tell a comprehensive economic impact story for both sports and special events. Um, so now moving on to the next side, we'll talk a little bit more about these opportunities. So to cover the trends of um, sporting events and live events in the city, we've kind of taken a four pillar approach to this, um, discussing professional international sports, um, our collegiate conference championships, um, youth sporting tournaments and festivals. Um, so beginning with uh, professional international sports, we've been focusing more on fan-based experience, um, including fan festivals, block parties, tailgates, um, interactive experiences um, to provide these opportunities as uh, packages for our attendees to attend. Um, the first major one we have been working on 
closely over the past few months has been the Major League Soccer All-Star Weekend, which will be here in July of 2023. Um, we will discuss that a little bit later in this presentation. Um, we've also been fortunate enough to host on um, Premier Lacrosse League Championships, um, Premier Rugby Sevens over at Audi Field. And then um, also later this month, we're thrilled to have the opportunity to host the uh, National Women's Soccer League Championship, which will be a celebration of um, our professional women's soccer league, um, which their championship game will be held um, in prime time over at Audi Field. Um, we've also been fortunate enough to host many different international soccer friendlies, including most recently having the uh, National Women's Soccer League team um, here in, uh, in D.C. to post um, a match against uh, Nigeria. And then also next summer, we're looking forward to hosting the uh, CONCACAF Gold Cup, where there will be um, tons of international soccer matches over at Audi Field during that first week of July. Um, another exciting opportunity that has recently come on board with us has been through eSports. Um, through Monumental Sports and their professional um, eSports division, um, District Gaming, they're opening up a new eSports venue. It's a nearly 14,000 square foot um, venue that will be able to host many different competitions and various events that will be opening in early 2023. Um, this will provide us with a great opportunity to go after top tier professional esports events, and we're looking forward to that. Um, next, DC has been fortunate um, to continue to be an action an attraction uh, for many collegiate conferences from basketball championship perspective. Um, this has been an increased focus and it has expanded the interest of other sports such as lacrosse, soccer, and wrestling. Um, we are also very excited about the, the opportunity to host the Army-Navy football game in 2024. This will be in December over at FedEx Field. Um, we've also been very thrilled to continue our relationship with the Colonial Athletic Association for 2023, hosting their conference um, championship over at the Entertainment Sports Arena. Um, also with the Atlantic 10 ever since 2018, um, we have we've hosted them twice over at Capital One Arena and look forward to having them again in the future. Um, we have an open bid with the Big Ten Men's Basketball Conference for their conference championship for 2027 through 2030 over at Cap One Arena. And then we are excited to welcome back the Atlantic, Atlantic Coast Conference in 2024 over at Cap One Arena. Um, we've also been working in collaboration closely with our local universities to bring other events just besides basketball, such as lacrosse, soccer, and volleyball. And then lastly, next week, we're excited to bring back um, the Truth and Service Classic. This will be the second annual event of it. Um, focusing on Howard, and they will be taking on Harvard, um, like I said, later this, later this month over at Audi Field. Um, also, with sporting events, we're continuing to see double-digit increases in sports such as baseball, volleyball, and tennis for both boys and girls. Um, later this, going into early 2023 in February over President's Day weekend, we're excited to have the opportunity to welcome back the Capitol Hill Volleyball Classic. Um, they're looking to be back at full capacity. Um, their registration just opened a couple days ago, and they already have secured over 900 um, teams for that weekend. So looking forward for them to getting close to that 1,000 team mark. Um, they're looking at taking over the whole entire building again with 30,000 plus unique attendees um, in the building each day over President's Day weekend, which is about 17,000 total room nights over that holiday weekend. Um, we are also actively going after other events such as amateur basketball and youth tournaments. Um, and we're also continuing to see growth in flag football, soccer, and lacrosse. And then lastly, on this pillar approach, we have festivals. Um, so with Events DC, we're looking at bringing many different music and cultural festivals to Washington, Washington DC. Most notably this past June, we were able to work in conjunction with Events DC and the mayor's office to bring Pharrell's Something in the Water Festival to Independence Avenue over Juneteenth weekend. This is something that we are looking at hosting annual in the district with it moving over to Penn Avenue in the future. Um, the festival grounds over at RFK has also been a popular spot at hosting these festivals. Um, they most recently hosted the Project Golo Festival, um, which brought in top EDC music performers to DC over um, the last weekend in April. And then following that next weekend, we had our annual Broccoli City Festival. And we're looking forward to having these two great weekends of the music celebration in Washington, DC again next summer. Um, on the slide we are currently on, I just wanted to highlight uh, the Major League Soccer All-Star Game. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, um, we're excited to be working with um, Events DC, DC United, and Major League Soccer to bring this great soccer um, celebration to DC in 2023. So we'll be coming to Audi Field. The game will take place on July 19th, but in the days following that on the 17th and 18th, um, there will be um, a series of different events that will take place throughout the city. This includes um, many different community initiatives, um, a concert, um, parties, and the MLS All-Star Skill Challenge, along with their um, Fan Fest. 
Um, so Major League Soccer is currently working through moving um, towards a couple of different contracts with the select few hotels for their staffing and groupings. Um, Washington.org will be a one-stop shop for all fans to find hotel deals um, and see things that are going on in D.C. while they're here for the game. Um, more information for how you can get involved, um, and this will be coming out shortly. Um, as you guys have already seen the, the hype video for this that MLS had prepared for us. And then lastly, on the uh, next slide, just wanted to give a brief overview of um, the sporting events that we do have coming up um, in Washington, D.C. over the uh, next year or so. Um, I believe this presentation will be shared with everyone, so you will have this um, at your convenience later on. And then um, next, I would like to introduce Lindsay Hill, who is our Associate Director of Tourism Sales. Thank you so much, Chris. Um, for Destination DC, I am your group guru, assisting students and senior group tour operators with their DC visits. Uh, 2022 was a great year. Uh, DC group travel continued to bounce back after students were the first to return out of the pandemic. We expected about an 80% return to pre-pandemic numbers and did see that materialize, which was very exciting. Um, inquiries for 2023 groups are strong, as I'm being told from my clients. Uh, we've also been experiencing a big interest in new content and new itineraries with a strong focus on Black history and diverse communities, diplomacy, STEAM, and community service. Um, at the end of August, we also had the privilege of hosting the Student and Youth Travel Association, or SIDA, annual conference. This was the first one back in person after three years. Celebrating SIDA's 25-year history, this welcome back was a huge success with over 100 student tour operators in attendance. Um, here we had the opportunity to showcase uh, new hotels, tours, attractions, and itinerary ideas through sightseeing tours and evening events. The feedback has been nothing but tremendous, and we thank all of you who participated along with us. Looking into the next year, um, let's take a deeper look into what I will be focusing on for 2023 on the next slide. I already mentioned the need for product development in STEAM and Black history itineraries. Uh, the team will continue to work on expanding knowledge of these products that incorporate national and local history and a wider range of partners with the intent to see neighborhoods featured standard and revamped tour offerings. You will also see new itineraries highlighting social justice and sustainability as students are increasingly interested in these topics. A reminder as well that a lot of our younger travelers missed out on some key social interactions while school is remote. Workshops and guided worksheets can be helpful in crafting their experience with you when they visit. Last year, our visitor services team received a lot of interest in multi-generational or grandparent-grandchild trips. Uh, this interest has crossed into the group world. I'm starting to get some questions about this. Um, so research, tour development, and education will be done for adult tour operators on this upcoming market, and I hope for DC to be a leader on this front moving forward. Lastly, a bus driver shortage continues to cause hardships nationwide for tour operators, uh, mainly when it comes to an increased cost of bus transportation, causing a rise in the total basic cost of a trip for consumers. However, this does create some opportunities for DC. More groups are looking at fly-ins, creating a need for local bus transportation. Groups are adding one extra night, one extra hotel night as drivers will no longer drive overnight and groups might be looking to walk more, driving greater interest in our downtown hotels. Um, to maximize this opportunity, I do encourage our hotel partners to look into partnerships with Union Station Parking Garage, nearby parking lots and garages to your properties or um, curb permits um, through DDOT to win this potential business. All right, moving from domestic to all things international, I turn the stage to our Director of Tourism, Letizia Sertori. Thank you, Lindsay, and uh, good, um, good day, everybody. Um, I'm actually very happy to start um, 
my conversation with you today, um, making sure that you know that the two major key obstacles that hinder international visitation uh, for the past couple of years uh, have been finally, you know, all removed, starting from the borders last, last November that fully reopened to the lifting of all tester requirements to come into the United States, which were lifted completely in June of this year. Um, this doesn't mean that um, all the obstacles have been removed. Unfortunately, uh, we're still dealing with some exchange rates um, predominantly now versus the US dollars is really strong against the Euro and the British pound. Um, and so there is still some political instability that is mixed with additional um, limited air service capacity and still a uh, long time for uh, visa appointments. Uh, however, we are all working closely with uh, the key partners uh, in this field to make sure that all these um, other obstacles are be slowly uh, removed um, or um, are making is making is getting better for our international visitors to uh, come back fully to the United States. Um, we are monitoring really close the pace of return to travel from all our key international markets, thanks to uh, new expanded research tools that now we have available and that are allowing us to track visitation monthly and in real time. We also match what we're getting monthly with what all our clients have told us. And we found that this is matching, which is great. And so we are able to share um, a better um, intelligence for all of you, your stakeholders, uh, when you're ready to come back and uh, dive deeper into the international market. We're complementing this data with some key action items for 2023 and beyond. Uh, that you can see um, in the next slide. Um, as I said, um, everything is, uh, that we do um, is backed uh, by real-time data. And um, uh, that's a totally a game changer because uh, that's going to help us. In, it's, it's a game changer on how we're going to work with specific international markets. Uh, Theresa mentioned about global marketplace. Uh, make sure to uh, stay in the lookout for the email, for the invitation to this event that is going to be held in January, because that's where we're going to dive deep into the data and the market strategy for our key international markets. Uh, also, in person is back. I just came back from Frankfurt, Germany, uh, where I attended the Brand USA Travel Week Europe. Um, I had about 40 appointments and uh, the hype and the excitement is there. Um, we uh, are also getting ready to host our first international uh, regional trade show, uh, the C Capital Region USA Global Travel Exchange, with clients coming from the UK, Germany, and France uh, next week. And we're also heading to London in December for our return to market uh, sales and media mission which will include a big consumer activation. And this takes me to the next focus action item, uh, which is um, coming back into promotions and marketing. And thanks to this new uh, data and our clients' feedback, together with the market insight that uh, is provided by our international offices, we're working on a very solid promotion and marketing strategy for 2023 and beyond which will help us amplify our effort and show the world that this is back and we're ready. Um, in the next slide, you'll uh, see feature one of our greatest partners and supporters in this international arena, which is the Metropolitan Washington Airports Authority. Um, they're also ready for some big news. Um, one is linked to the uh, Metro Silver Line. Nothing official has been released yet, but we know that the 60th anniversary of Dallas International Airport is coming up in November. So um, hopefully we will be ready to promote this service, especially among leisure visitors. This will definitely help to get uh, all those visitors that might have even long layover at Dallas. And now with the Metro, they can easily come in, enjoy your restaurants, enjoy your tours and attractions, and then go back to Dallas and continue their journey. Uh, new routes have been added in 2022. We'll continue in 2023. 
uh, recent announcements included Iberia, uh, which launched in June and uh, nonstop from Madrid, Spain. Uh, this is a seasonal flight, uh, which is coming back next year. Uh, United Airlines is also about to launch in November, uh, a nonstop service from Cape Town, uh, South Africa. And then next year, we have a new low cost career named Play, uh, which is launching a nonstop service from Iceland. Uh, but their goal is actually, their focus is the beyond European market. So this will give us an additional uh, air, air lift from Europe into uh, Washington DC, into IAD. And with all these new routes being added, uh, the authority is joining forces with us and providing also additional financial support to make sure that target airlines and routes are highlighted and successful. Um, you might have noticed that I haven't mentioned Asia yet. Um, as our Asian market will be the slowest to return. However, we have a great news that NAA is resuming services from Tokyo, Japan into IED at the end of October. Um, we'll continue to be very aggressive on communication. And so I would like to introduce our newest member of our team, Mr. Darren Gunn. And Darren, I'm gonna turn it over to you and please um, um, give an update about what we're doing into our Asian markets to be still relevant. Okay, many thanks, Leticia. Good morning. My name is Darren Gan. I am the new International Tourism Manager for Asian Market. Leticia just mentioned our Asian market is a little bit slow in recovery. Why? That's mainly because of China. China is DC's number one overseas market before pandemic. In 2019, there were 190,000 Chinese tourists visiting DC. However, China is still having strict quarantine policies. Once the country opens up and the airway resumes, we anticipate a rapid recovery from Chinese market. And the US key gateways like DC will be the first to welcome our Chinese visitors. So Destination DC's Welcome China program is DC's gateway for working with the Chinese travel and tourism market. Welcome China program is to help DC attractions, hotels, restaurants, and retailers to prepare to welcome Chinese visitors. At the same time, Welcome China program is also to help Chinese tour operators to identify partners who are best suited to provide services to their clients. So the program is open to all DDC members to learn about the best practice in the Chinese market. Before the pandemic, we have 90 DDC members listed in Welcome China program. However, the program stopped for two years because of the pandemic. But we did a little bit of reconnection with our members this summer. And there were still two thirds of them interested in this program. In the coming year, we will resume Welcome China program at this moment, we are compiling the program's quarterly e-news and blog. In the near future, our China office will resume trainings and webinars on the Chinese market, so stay tuned. Also, what we are focusing in the Chinese market is social media. We tell our partners and travelers in China that we are still here, waiting for you to come back. We have two social platform, social media platform at this moment, WeChat and Weibo. We are constantly posting stories about DC, especially about our members. For example, National Zoo's panda stories are always very best hits. Also, new interesting restaurants, hotel recommendations are also very popular. Our WeChat channel has gained nearly 2,000 followers in the last quarter while our Weibo generates around 300,000 reviews per post. That is very impressive as a DMO social media platform in China. In the near future, we will still focus more on social media in China before the country fully opens up. We will provide interesting contents to say we are still here. And um, 
We are also preparing contents for the China's Instagram Xiaohongshu as well as China's TikTok Douyin. Last but not least, I would like to mention a little bit on Special Agent Academy. Our agents will master the art of matching travelers' special interests and the travel styles with a personalized DC experience. Special Agent Academy is in English, in Spanish, and Mandarin. We will promote it more to our partners in China to ensure that when the country opens up, DC is ready with all these amazing special agents. You might be wondering what is this DC Special Agent Academy? Now I give the floor to my colleague, Tourism Project Manager, Erica Rido. Here you go, Erica. All right, thanks so much, Darren. Um, so hi everyone. As Darren mentioned, my name is Erica Riddle. I'm the Tourism Project Manager here at Destination DC, and I'm going to kick us off for ways to get involved in all the wonderful work you just heard all my colleagues mention. So a major way to get involved in our work is via the DC Special Agent Academy that Darren also mentioned. So I oversee the English and Spanish versions of this academy, while Darren handles our Mandarin version. Uh, this is an online training tool that we utilize to educate our clients who are travel agents and tour operators on all things Washington, DC. We currently have over 1,000 agents registered in the Academy, which is a great milestone for us, and they are from over 40 different countries worldwide. So the agents who register complete a series of missions and quizzes. Once they successfully pass five missions, they're deemed a certified DC special agent. So the content of these missions varies from the basics of how to navigate the city to more intricate details like one day itineraries for each neighborhood of the city. We update this content annually and we mention a large number of members in these missions. So please continue to keep Destination DC updated on all the new developments at your businesses and will in turn keep the information fresh in the Academy so that our clients know what's new. I'll now pass it over to my fellow Erica, Erica Jones, who is our Tourism and Visitor Services Coordinator to go over some additional ways to get involved. Over to you, Erica. Thank you, Erica. Good morning, everyone. As our other Erica mentioned, I'm Erica Jones, Tourism and Visitor Services Coordinator. Uh, yes, come get involved with our FAMs. We are working hard to continue supporting our FAM requests from emerging markets. This really allows our tour operators and travel agents to experience the real DC firsthand so they can better relay product knowledge to their clients. Creating and strengthening networks between travel trade and DC suppliers is a top priority. There are so many benefits that come with supporting FAMs, so we will continue to provide increased opportunities for collaboration on future trips. Also, please make sure to head on over to the member extranet so you can register for our upcoming members only co-op opportunities. Check out the Marketing Outlook Recap Bulletin and there will be a link to register for Destination DC co-ops. And on to the next slide. Here we have our upcoming sales missions. Um, the events that are in purple are our um, co-op opportunities. So if you are interested in any of these, again, please head over to our member extranet so you can register. So if you are interested in getting involved and have questions, please reach out to our team admin, Jennifer Porter, whose information is here. And now I will kick it back over to Teresa. Great. Thank you, Erica Jones. And thanks so much to our team. Um, I really appreciate um, everything uh, that you all do for us. Um, I do see that we do have a question in the chat. Uh, it's from Christina. And it says, I'm wondering if someone might share an opportunities for members to promote their upcoming events, etc. at the upcoming Cruza Global Market Exchange. And so um, just to give you all um, a, a quick recap of that, um, we have a marketing partnership with Maryland, Virginia, and DC, and it's called Capital Region USA, and the short term is CRUZA. Uh, that's what it's um, actually just the acronym for it, because, you know, we're a city of acronyms. And uh, this year, um, actually starting next week, is uh, the first of three years um, that we have been received a grant to be hosting a, a travel exchange. And it is a week-long um, appointment-based show that's going to be first hosted here 
in DC. Next year, it will be in Maryland. And then the next year, it will be in Virginia, where we're bringing over uh, 35 of our top tour operators from the UK, Germany, and France. And so, um, and again, we're going to have appointment-based shows, and we're showing them all about DC, um, as well as really kind of take a little bit of a deeper dive into how they can package the region once uh, the visitors are starting to come back, which they are. And so, um, yes, uh, the short answer, Christina, is please send over to Letizia any events that you all have coming up. She's going to have a cheat sheet as she has these 20-minute uh, appointments with the operators. And we will have um, an events calendar and obviously load everything up on Washington.org, as Erica had mentioned. Go to the extranet. Make sure everything, all your pictures are updated, videos are updated, as well as all of your events. And we will use that cheat sheet of all the upcoming activities. And so hopefully I um, uh, answered that question. Um, we have another question in here. Um, one of the questions is, where are the co-op opportunities located? Um, if you all go into the co-op, I mean, the uh, extranet, as um, Erica Jones has mentioned, we have a whole section in there that you can go under each one of the co-ops. And so if you are having problem, go to uh, your partnership contact or, you know what, just reach out to us and we will help navigate you along to get to those co-ops. Um, Scott Balio has a, a note in here. Thanks, Scott. Um, if you all don't know, Scott Balio is the uh, president of the Capital Region Program. He uh, stated that this isn't a question, um, but a big thank you to Destination DC for supporting the Global Travel Exchange. And we're excited. We're setting the bar high for the next uh, two years. So we're, we're very excited uh, to be participating and to welcome all our customers back into the region. So uh, without further ado, um, I thank all of you for your time today. As you can see, there is a lot going on um, as we head out of this um, into the recovery and head out of this pandemic. Uh, our head is down. We are moving forward. Um, but we absolutely need to communicate with you all constantly. So please, if you have any questions, I know there's a lot of new people um, into the market. If you don't understand anything, please pick up the phone and call us. We're happy to spend some time with you all. Um, I also would like to thank my dream team. I can't be any more proud of the hard work that they've done over the past years, but also knowing um, that we are head down moving forward um, into the future. So thanks everyone and have a great rest of the day.